Well, I'll first begin by giving you a brief introduction to the immune system, right? So you have an idea of what I'm talking about in case you're not very familiar with it. Well, the immune system is, has evolved just to help us fight infections, and there are two components under the immune system. We have the innate immune system, which serves as the first line of defense when you have an infection. And basically, the, these are the components under the innate immune system. We have the skin, which serves as the first line of defense. We have mucous membranes, like in your nose, your respiratory tract, that are able to tract, that are able to uh, trap the uh, microorganisms before they can even get into your cells. Then we have uh, the ACL that is produced by the parietal cells of the stomach. They also help neutralize toxins. Then antimicrobial peptides, and these are contained in fluids in the body, like maybe tears. They contain antimicrobial peptides, and they all are part of the innate system. Then we have cellular components such as uh, natural killer cells and macrophages, which also help fight against infection. Then, should the infection persist or the immune system fail to uh, eliminate the invading pathogen, then the adaptive immune system uh, comes in to connect. So, it kind of, I mean, they work hand in hand, but then this uh, takes place before the adaptive uh, branch comes in. And this develops over time. As you are immunized or maybe you are infected with a bacteria or virus, then you develop cells that are able to produce uh, effective molecules that get rid of the pathogen. Then you have memory cells being stored so that in case you have reinfection in the same organism, then you have the cells being able to fight that nutrient. And under this, we have uh, B cells and T cells. And the B cells produce antibodies, which help fight against uh, in, uh, the infection before it gets into the cells. Because the moment it gets into the cells, then we need uh, T cells like the helper cells and the D-cytotoxic cells to neutralize the toxins. Then, everyone is different like, as far as uh, the way they respond to uh, an infection. And this is influenced by a lot, a lot of factors. And I've listed some of them here. Genetics really does play a role. Like an example is somebody who, like, who is born with skin, that is, uh, severe combined immunodeficiency. Such a person is not able to produce T and B cells. So I don't know what you heard of uh, the bubble boy. He was born with skin. So because of that, for the 12 years or so that he did, he was, he lived in a bubble. So that he wouldn't be exposed to the environment so in case he should be infected. Because he, wasn't, he wouldn't be able to produce B and T cells to fight the infection. Then age also does play a role. As you age, of course, your immune function might not be as effective as when you are younger. Then all of these things will play a role. Like I'll be focusing on uh, diet. And I'll be focusing on diet because diet also is one of the factors that really uh, plays a role in your immune function. Your nutritional status really does influence how immunocompetent you are. And due to this, a lot of uh, studies have been done to investigate the impact of nutrients, like whether a growth or a combination, to see the impact on uh, immune function. And I'll be focusing on vitamin E. Well, vitamin E has, I'm sure all of us here are familiar with this, and that's so you know, anyway. And we have the tocopherols and the tocotrienols, where the alpha tocopherols being the biologically active form of the vitamin. And Vitamin E is basically known for its uh, antioxidant zone, so it's able to prevent lipid peroxidation and get scavenged free radicals so that they don't damage our tissues. And because of this fraction, this antioxidant zone, it has been shown to have an influence on the immune function. Maybe it could be due to other factors apart from the antioxidant um, And here I've just put some food sources of the vitamin E. Yeah. Vegetable or green leafy vegetables, so they are very rich sources of vitamin. I will just go straight into some of the papers that I looked at, in which they investigated the effect of the role that vitamin E plays in immune function. And this paper by uh, Malbec et 
out in 2002 looked at the effect of HIV on the new function of colorectal cancer patients. And this patient, they tend to generate a lot of oxidative stress, like right? a lot of the adipose are very, they tend to generate a lot of free radicals, and because of this, it really like, suppresses their immune function. So this group of people hypothesized that if uh, vitamin E is an antioxidant, then supplementing their diet with vitamin E could help scavenge some of these free radicals and thus maybe enhance their immune function. So they supplemented their diet with uh, 750 milligram vitamin E and these components just to help uh, the solubility of vitamin E. And here afterwards they measured the, the plasma levels of alpha tocopherol and you can see that this is after the supplementation. This year is before the supplementation. And you can see an uh, enhanced increase in the uh, plasma level of alpha tocopherol after the supplementation. Then they isolated the uh, polymorphonuclear cells and tried to look at certain immune cells in order to see the impact of the like, of these cells. They, the Y axis here, this figure here is just uh, they stay in for R2 production using uh, after they have stimulated the cells with PMB or ionomycin. And they wanted to look at their T cell function. And this CD3 plus is just a marker for T cells. And the R2, which is interleukin 2, uh, as a cytokine that is pro uh, produced by activated T cells and sometimes even natural killer cells. And this one, the, they use anti R2 antibodies to detect the presence of the anti and the R2 that was being produced. And this here is just the control. And you can see that after uh, the supplementation, this is the after vitamin E supplementation before the supplementation. And you can see that after supplementation, the CD3 plus R2 plus cells was more as compared to before the uh, before supplementation by the E, showing that the T cell function was gained and had because as your they proliferate and reduce the cytokine so that you can be able to neutralize any effect uh, invading pathogen. Okay. Then they also measured the production of uh, these cytokines, the ferron, which is also produced by uh, T cells. And they looked at the CD4, CD8. The CD4 is a surface marker for T alpha cells, and the CD8 is a surface marker for T cytotoxic cells. And in all cases, you can see that after the supplementation, all these parameters were enhanced as compared to before the supplementation. So at least this group was able to demonstrate that supplementation was enhancing T cell 